The North Pole, also known as the Geographic North Pole or Terrestrial North Pole, is, subject to the caveats explained below, defined as the point in the Northern Hemisphere where the Earth's axis of rotation meets its surface. The North Pole is the northernmost point on the Earth, lying diametrically opposite the South Pole. It defines geodetic latitude 90 degrees north, as well as the direction of true north. At the North Pole all directions point south, all lines of longitude converge there, so its longitude can be defined as any degree value. Along tight latitude circles, counterclockwise is east and clockwise is west. The North Pole is at the center of the Northern Hemisphere. While the South Pole lies on a continental land mass, the North Pole is located in the middle of the Arctic Ocean amid waters that are almost permanently covered with constantly shifting sea ice. This makes it impractical to construct a permanent station at the North Pole, unlike the South Pole. However, the Soviet Union, and later Russia, constructed a number of manned drifting stations on a generally annual basis since 1937, some of which have passed over or very close to the pole. Since 2002, the Russians have also annually established a base, Barneo, close to the pole. This operates for a few weeks during early spring. Studies in the 2000s predicted that the North Pole may become seasonally ice-free because of Arctic ice shrinkage, with timescales varying from 2016 to the late 21st century or later. The sea depth at the North Pole has been measured at 4,261 meters feet by the Russian Mir submersible in 2007 and at 4,087 meters feet by USS Nautilus in 1958. The nearest land is usually said to be Kafeklubin Island, off the northern coast of Greenland about 700 kilometers 430 miles away, though some perhaps semi-permanent gravel banks lie slightly closer. The nearest permanently inhabited place is alert in the Kikiktalik region, Nunavut, Canada, which is located 817 kilometers 508 miles from the pole. Precise definition The Earth S axis of rotation, and hence the position of the North Pole, was commonly believed to be fixed relative to the surface of the Earth until, in the 18th century, the mathematician Leonard Euler predicted that the axis might wobble slightly. Around the beginning of the 20th century, astronomers noticed a small apparent variation of latitude, as determined for a fixed point on Earth from the observation of stars. Part of this variation could be attributed to a wandering of the pole across the Earth's surface, by a range of a few meters. The wandering has several periodic components and an irregular component. The component with a period of about 435 days is identified with the eight-month wandering predicted by Euler and is now called the Chandler Wobble after its discoverer. The exact point of intersection of the Earth's axis and the Earth S surface, at any given moment, is called the instantaneous pole, but because of the wobble, this cannot be used as a definition of a fixed north pole, or south pole, when meter scale precision is required. It is desirable to tie the system of Earth coordinates latitude, longitude, and elevations or orography to fixed landforms. Of course, given plate tectonics and isostasy, there is no system in which all geographic features are fixed. Yet the International Earth Rotation and Reference Systems Service and the International Astronomical Union have defined a framework called the International Terrestrial Reference System. Exploration Pre-1900 as early as the 16th century, many prominent people correctly believed that the North Pole was in a sea, which in the 19th century was called the Polynia or Open Polar Sea. It was therefore hoped that passage could be found through ice flows at favorable times of the year. Several expeditions set out to find the way, generally with whaling ships, already commonly used in the cold northern latitudes. One of the earliest expeditions to set out with the explicit intention of reaching the North Pole was that of British naval officer William Edward Perry, who in 1827 reached latitude 82 degrees 45 north. In 1871 the Polaris Expedition, a U.S. attempt on the pole led by Charles Francis Hall, ended in disaster. 
Another British Royal Navy attempt on the Pole, part of the British Arctic Expedition, by Commander Albert H. Markham reached a then-record 83 degrees 20 minutes 26 seconds north in May 1876 before turning back. An 1879-1881 expedition commanded by U.S. Naval Officer George W. DeLong ended tragically when their ship, the USS Jeanette, was crushed by ice. Over half the crew, including DeLong, were lost. In April 1895 the Norwegian explorers Fridtjof Nansen and Halmar Johansson struck out for the Pole on skis after leaving Nansen's icebound ship Fram. The pair reached latitude 86 degrees 14 north before they abandoned the attempt and turned southwards, eventually reaching Franz Josef Land. In 1897 Swedish engineer Solomon August André and two companions tried to reach the North Pole in the hydrogen balloon Ornan. Eagle but came down 300 kilometers 190 miles north of Kvitoya, the northeasternmost part of the Svalbard archipelago. They trekked to Kvitoya but died there three months later. In 1930 the remains of this expedition were found by the Norwegian Bratvog expedition. The Italian explorer Luigi Amadeo, Duke of the Abruzzi and Captain Umberto Cogni of the Italian Royal Navy, Regia Marina, sailed the converted whaler Stella Polare. Pole Star from Norway in 1899. On of March 1900 Cogni led a party over the ice and reached latitude 86 degrees 34, on 25 April, setting a new record by beating Nansen's result of 1895 by 35 to 40 kilometers 22 to 25 miles. Cogni barely managed to return to the camp, remaining there until 23 June. On 16 August the Stella Polaire left Rudolf Island heading south and the expedition returned to Norway. 1900–40 The U.S. explorer Frederick Cook claimed to have reached the North Pole on 21 April 1908 with two Inuit men, Awela and Etikishuk, but he was unable to produce convincing proof and his claim is not widely accepted. The conquest of the North Pole was for many years credited to U.S. Navy engineer Robert Perry, who claimed to have reached the Pole on 6 April 1909, accompanied by Matthew Henson and four Inuit men, Oda, Siglo, Egingwa, and Ukwea. However, Perry's claim remains highly disputed and controversial. Those who accompanied Perry on the final stage of the journey were not trained in Western navigation, and thus could not independently confirm his navigational work, which some claimed to have been particularly sloppy as he approached the pole. The distances and speeds that Perry claimed to have achieved once the last support party turned back seem incredible to many people, almost three times that which he had accomplished up to that point. Perry S account of a journey to the pole and back while traveling along the direct line, the only strategy that is consistent with the time constraints that he was facing, is contradicted by Henson's account of tortuous detours to avoid pressure ridges and open leads. The British explorer Wally Herbert, initially a supporter of Perry, researched Perry. S records in 1989 and found that there were significant discrepancies in the explorer. S. Navigational records. He concluded that Perry had not reached the pole. Support for Perry came again in 2005, however, when British explorer Tom Avery and four companions recreated the outward portion of Perry's journey with replica wooden sleds and Canadian Eskimo dog teams, reaching the North Pole in 36 days, 22 hours, nearly five hours faster than Perry. However, Avery S' fastest five-day march was 90 nautical miles, significantly short of the 135 claimed by Perry. Avery writes on his website that, "...the admiration and respect which I hold for Robert Perry, Matthew Henson and the four Inuit men who ventured north in 1909, has grown enormously since we set out from Cape Columbia." Having now seen for myself how he traveled across the pack ice, I am more convinced than ever that Perry did indeed discover the North Pole. Another rejection of Perry's claim arrived in 2009, when E. Miles Standish of the California Institute of Technology, an experienced referee of scientific claims, reported numerous alleged lacunae and inconsistencies. The first claimed flight over the pole was made on the 9th of May 1926 by U.S. Naval officer Richard E. Byrd and pilot Floyd Bennett in a Fokker tri-motor aircraft. 
Although verified at the time by a committee of the National Geographic Society, this claim has since been undermined by the 1996 revelation that Bird's long hidden diary S. Solar sextant data, which the NGS never checked, consistently contradict his June 1926 report. S. Parallel data by over 100 miles 160 kilometers. The secret reports alleged on Root's solar sextant data were inadvertently so impossibly overprecise that he excised all these alleged raw solar observations out of the version of the report finally sent to geographical societies five months later, while the original version was hidden for 70 years, a realization first published in 2000 by the University of Cambridge after scrupulous refereeing, according to Standish. Anyone who is acquainted with the facts and has any amount of logical reasoning cannot avoid the conclusion that neither Cook, nor Perry, nor Bird reached the North Pole, and they all knew it. The first consistent, verified, and scientifically convincing attainment of the pole was on 12 May 1926, by Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen and his U.S. sponsor Lincoln Ellsworth from the airship Norge. Norge, though Norwegian-owned, was designed and piloted by the Italian Umberto Nobile. The flight started from Svalbard in Norway, and crossed the Arctic Ocean to Alaska. Nobile, with several scientists and crew from the Norge, overflew the pole a second time on 24 May 1928, in the airship Italia. The Italia crashed on its return from the pole, with the loss of half the crew. In May 1937 the world's first North Pole Ice Station, North Pole 1, was established by Soviet scientists by air 20 kilometers 13 miles from the North Pole. The expedition members, oceanographer Pyotr Shershov, meteorologist Yevgeny Fyodorov, radio operator Ernst Krenkel, and the leader Ivan Popinin conducted scientific research at the station for the next nine months. By 19 February 1938, when the group was picked up by the ice breakers Tamir and Merman, their station had drifted 2,850 kilometers to the eastern coast of Greenland. 1940–2000 In May 1945 an RAF Lancaster of the Ares expedition became the first Commonwealth aircraft to overfly the North Geographic and North Magnetic Poles. The plane was piloted by David Cecil McKinley of the Royal Air Force. It carried an 11-man crew, with Kenneth C. McClure of the Royal Canadian Air Force in charge of all scientific observations. In 2006, McClure was honored with a spot in Canada's Aviation Hall of Fame. Discounting Perry S. Disputed claim, the first men to set foot at the North Pole were a Soviet party including geophysicists Mikhail Ostrakhin and Pavel Senko, oceanographers Mikhail Somov and Pavel Jordenko, and other scientists and flight crew 24 people in total of Alexander Kuznetsov's Sever II expedition, March to May 1948. It was organized by the Chief Directorate of the Northern Sea Route. The party flew on three planes, pilots Ivan Cherevichny, Vitaly Mislenikov and Ilya Kotov from Katelny Island to the North Pole and landed there at 4.44 p.m., Moscow time, UTC plus 4 o'clock, on 23 April 1948. They established a temporary camp and for the next two days conducted scientific observations. On 26 April the expedition flew back to the continent. Next year, on 9 May 1949, two other Soviet scientists, Vitaly Volovich and Andrei Medvedev, became the first people to parachute onto the North Pole. They jumped from a Douglas C-47 Skytrain, registered CCCPH-369, on 3 May 1952 U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Joseph O. Fletcher and Lieutenant William Pershing Benedict, along with scientist Albert P. Crary, landed a modified Douglas C-47 Skytrain at the North Pole. Some Western sources considered this to be the first landing at the pole until the Soviet landings became widely known. The United States Navy submarine USS Nautilus SSN 571 crossed the North Pole on 3 August 1958. On 17 March 1959 USS Skate SSN 578 surfaced at the pole, breaking through the ice above it, becoming the first naval vessel to do so, setting aside Perry's claim. The first confirmed surface conquest of the North Pole was that of Ralph Plaustad, Walt Peterson, Jerry Pitzel and Jean-Luc Bombardier, who traveled over the ice by snowmobile and arrived on 19 April 1968. 
The United States Air Force independently confirmed their position. On 6 April 1969 Wally Herbert and companions Alan Gill, Roy Corner and Kenneth Hedges of the British Trans-Arctic Expedition became the first men to reach the North Pole on foot, albeit with the aid of dog teams and airdrops. They continued on to complete the first surface crossing of the Arctic Ocean, and by its longest axis, Utjagvik, Alaska to Svalbard, a feat that has never been repeated. Because of suggestions, later proven false, of Plaustad. S. Use of air transport. Some sources classify Herbert's expedition as the first confirmed to reach the North Pole over the ice surface by any means. In the 1980s, Plausted's pilots Weldy Phipps and Ken Lee signed affidavits asserting that no such airlift was provided. It is also said that Herbert was the first person to reach the Pole of Inaccessibility. On 17 August 1977 the Soviet nuclear-powered icebreaker Arktika completed the first surface vessel journey to the North Pole. In 1982 Renulf Fines and Charles R. Burton became the first people to cross the Arctic Ocean in a single season. They departed from Cape Crozier, Ellesmere Island, on 17 February 1982 and arrived at the geographic North Pole on 10 April 1982. They traveled on foot and snowmobile. From the pole, they traveled towards Svalbard but, due to the unstable nature of the ice, ended their crossing at the ice edge after drifting south on an ice floe for 99 days. They were eventually able to walk to their expedition ship MV Benjamin Boring and boarded it on 4 August 1982 at position 80-31 N059W. As a result of this journey, which formed a section of the three-year Transglobe Expedition 1979-1982, Fines and Burton became the first people to complete a circumnavigation of the world via both North and South Poles, by surface travel alone. This achievement remains unchallenged to this day. In 1985 Sir Edmund Hillary, the first man to stand on the summit of Mount Everest, and Neil Armstrong, the first man to stand on the moon, landed at the North Pole in a small twin-engine ski plane. Hillary thus became the first man to stand at both poles and on the summit of Everest. In 1986 Will Steger, with seven teammates, became the first to be confirmed as reaching the pole by dogsled and without resupply. USS Gernard SSN 662, operated in the Arctic Ocean under the polar ice cap from September to November 1984 in company with one of her sister ships, the attack submarine USS Pintado SSN 672. On 12 November 1984 Gernard and Pintado became the third pair of submarines to surface together at the North Pole. In March 1990, Gernard deployed to the Arctic region during Exercise Ice X-90 and completed only the fourth winter submerged transit of the Bering and Seas. Gernard surfaced at the North Pole on April 18, in the company of the USS Seahorse SSN 669, on 6 May 1986 USS Archerfish SSN 678, USS Ray SSN 653, and USS Hawkbill SSN 666 surfaced at the North Pole, the first tri-submarine surfacing at the North Pole. On 21 April 1987 Shinji Kazama of Japan became the first person to reach the North Pole on a motorcycle, on 18 May 1987 USS Billfish SSN 676, USS Sea Devil SSN 664, and HMS Superb S109, surfaced at the North Pole, the first international surfacing at the North Pole. In 1988 a 13-man strong team, nine Soviets, four Canadians, skied across the Arctic from Siberia to northern Canada. One of the Canadians, Richard Weber became the first person to reach the pole from both sides of the Arctic Ocean. On 4 May 1990 Borga Ausland and Erling Kaj became the first explorers ever to reach the North Pole unsupported, after a 58-day ski trek from Ellesmere Island in Canada, a distance of 800 kilometers. On 7 September 1991 the German research vessel Polarstern and the Swedish icebreaker Odin reached the North Pole as the first conventional-powered vessels. Both scientific parties and crew took oceanographic and geological samples and had a common tug of war and a football game on an ice floe. Polarstern again reached the pole exactly 10 years later with the Healy. 
In 1998, 1999, and 2000 Lada Niva marshes, special very large wheeled versions made by Bronto, Lada Vaz's experimental product division, were driven to the North Pole. The 1998 expedition was dropped by parachute and completed the track to the North Pole. The 2000 expedition departed from a Russian research base around 114 km from the pole and claimed an average speed of 20 to 15 km per hour in an average temperature of minus 30 degrees Celsius. 21st century Commercial airliner flights on the polar routes may pass within viewing distance of the North Pole, for example, the flight from Chicago to Beijing may come close as latitude 89 degrees north, though because of prevailing winds return journeys go over the Bering Strait. In recent years journeys to the North Pole by air, landing by helicopter or on a runway prepared on the ice, or by icebreaker have become relatively routine, and are even available to small groups of tourists through adventure holiday companies. Parachute jumps have frequently been made onto the North Pole in recent years. The temporary seasonal Russian camp of Barneo has been established by air a short distance from the pole annually since 2002, and caters for scientific researchers as well as tourist parties. Trips from the camp to the pole itself may be arranged overland or by helicopter. The first attempt at underwater exploration of the North Pole was made on the 22nd of April 1998 by Russian firefighter and diver Andrei Roshkov with the support of the Diving Club of Moscow State University, but ended in fatality. The next attempted dive at the North Pole was organized the next year by the same diving club, and ended in success on 24 April 1999. The divers were Michael Wolf, Austria, Brett Cormack, UK, and Bob Wuzzes, USA. In 2005, the United States Navy submarine USS Charlotte SSN 766 surfaced through 155 centimeters (61 in) of ice at the North Pole and spent 18 hours there. In July 2007, British endurance swimmer Lewis Gordon Pugh completed a 1 kilometer (0.62 miles) swim at the North Pole. His feat, undertaken to highlight the effects of global warming, took place in clear water that had opened up between the ice flows. His later attempt to paddle a kayak to the North Pole in late 2008, following the erroneous prediction of clear water to the pole, was stymied when his expedition found itself stuck in thick ice after only three days. The expedition was then abandoned. By September 2007 the North Pole had been visited 66 times by different surface ships, 54 times by Soviet and Russian icebreakers, 4 times by Swedish Odin, 3 times by German Polarstern, 3 times by USCGC Healy and USCGC Polar Sea, and once by CCG's Louis S. St. Laurent and by Swedish Vidar Viking. 2007 Descent to the North Pole Seabed on 2 August 2007 a Russian scientific expedition Arctica 2007 made the first ever manned descent to the ocean floor at the North Pole, to a depth of 4.3 kilometers 2.7 miles, as part of the research program in support of Russia's 2001 extended continental shelf claim to a large swath of the Arctic Ocean floor. The descent took place in two mere submersibles and was led by Soviet and Russian polar explorer Artur Chalingarov. In a symbolic act of visitation, the Russian flag was placed on the ocean floor exactly at the pole. The expedition was the latest in a series of efforts intended to give Russia a dominant influence in the Arctic according to the New York Times. The warming Arctic climate and summer shrinkage of the iced area has attracted the attention of many countries, such as China and the United States, toward the top of the world, where resources and shipping routes may soon be exploitable. MLAE 2009 Expedition In 2009 the Russian Marine Live Ice Automobile Expedition MLAE 2009, with Vasily Elegin as a leader and a team of Afanasy Makovnev, Vladimir Obikod, Alexei Shakravkin, Sergei Larin, Alexei Yushikov and Nikolai Nikulshin reached the North Pole on two custom-built 6x6 low-pressure tire ATVs. YEMELYA-1 and YEMELYA-2, designed by Vasily Elegin, a known Russian mountain climber, explorer and engineer. The vehicles reached the North Pole on 26 April 2009, 17.30, Moscow time. The expedition was partly supported by Russian state aviation. The Russian Book of Records recognized it as the first successful vehicle trip from land to the geographical North Pole. 
MLAE 2013 Expedition. On 1 March 2013 the Russian Marine Live Ice Automobile Expedition MLAE 2013, with Vasily Elegin as a leader, and a team of Afanasy Makovnev, Vladimir Obikod, Alexei Shakravkin, Andrei Vankov, Sergei Isayev and Nikolai Kozlov on two custom-built 6x6 low-pressure tire ATVs. YEMELYA-3 and YEMELYA-4 started from Golomayani Island the Severnaya Zemlya Archipelago, to the North Pole across drifting ice of the Arctic Ocean. The vehicles reached the pole on 6 April and then continued to the Canadian coast. The coast was reached on 30 April 2013, 83 degrees 08 N, 075 degree 59 W Ward Hant Island, and on 5 May 2013 the expedition finished in Resolute Bay, New. The way between the Russian borderland Maktavi Island of the Severnaya Zemlya Archipelago, 80 degrees 15 N, 097 degree 27 E, and the Canadian coast Ward Hant Island, 83 degrees 08 N, 075 degree 59 W, took 55 days, it was approximately 2,300 km across drifting ice and about 4,000 km in total. The expedition was totally self-dependent and used no external supplies. The expedition was supported by the Russian Geographical Society. Day and night The sun at the North Pole is continuously above the horizon during the summer and continuously below the horizon during the winter. Sunrise is just before the March equinox around the 20th of March. The sun then takes three months to reach its highest point of near 23 and a half degrees elevation at the summer solstice around the 21st of June, after which time it begins to sink, reaching sunset just after the September equinox around the 23rd of September. When the sun is visible in the polar sky, it appears to move in a horizontal circle above the horizon. This circle gradually rises from near the horizon just after the vernal equinox to its maximum elevation in degrees above the horizon at summer solstice and then sinks back toward the horizon before sinking below it at the autumnal equinox. Hence the north and south poles experience the slowest rates of sunrise and sunset on Earth. A civil twilight period of about two weeks occurs before sunrise and after sunset, a nautical twilight period of about five weeks occurs before sunrise and after sunset and an astronomical twilight period of about seven weeks occurs before sunrise and after sunset. These effects are caused by a combination of the Earth's axial tilt and its revolution around the Sun. The direction of the Earth S axial tilt, as well as its angle relative to the plane of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, remains very nearly constant over the course of a year. Both change very slowly over long time periods. At northern midsummer the North Pole is facing towards the Sun to its maximum extent. As the year progresses and the Earth moves around the Sun, the North Pole gradually turns away from the Sun until at midwinter it is facing away from the Sun to its maximum extent. A similar sequence is observed at the South Pole, with a six-month time difference. Time In most places on Earth, local time is determined by longitude, such that the time of day is more or less synchronized to the position of the sun in the sky, for example, at midday the sun is roughly at its highest. This line of reasoning fails at the North Pole, where the sun rises and sets only once per year, and all lines of longitude, and hence all time zones, converge. There is no permanent human presence at the North Pole and no particular time zone has been assigned. Polar expeditions may use any time zone that is convenient, such as Greenwich Mean Time, or the time zone of the country from which they departed. Climate the North Pole is substantially warmer than the South Pole because it lies at sea level in the middle of an ocean, which acts as a reservoir of heat, rather than at altitude on a continental land mass. Despite being an ice cap, it shares some characteristics with a tundra climate ETF, due to the July and August temperatures peaking just above freezing. Winter temperatures at the northernmost weather station in Greenland can range from about minus 50 to minus 13 degrees Celsius, minus 58 to 9 degrees Fahrenheit, averaging around minus 31 degrees Celsius, minus 24 degrees Fahrenheit, with the North Pole being slightly colder. A, however, a freak storm caused the temperature to reach 0.7 degrees Celsius. 30 
33 degrees Fahrenheit for a time at a World Meteorological Organization buoy, located at 87.45 degrees north, on December 30, 2015. It was estimated that the temperature at the North Pole was between 30 and 35 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 1 and 2 degrees Celsius, during the storm. Summer temperatures, June, July, and August, average around the freezing point, 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest temperature yet recorded is 13 degrees Celsius, 55 degrees Fahrenheit, much warmer than the South Pole's record high of only minus 12.3 degrees Celsius, 9.9 .9 degrees Fahrenheit. A similar spike in temperatures occurred on November 15, 2016 when temperatures hit freezing. Yet again, February 2018 featured a storm so powerful that temperatures at Cape Morris Jessup, the world's northernmost weather station in Greenland, reached 6.1 degrees Celsius 43 degrees Fahrenheit, and spent 24 straight hours above freezing. Meanwhile, the pole itself was estimated to reach a high temperature of 1.6 degrees Celsius 35 degrees Fahrenheit. This same temperature of 1.6 degrees Celsius 35 degrees Fahrenheit was also recorded at the Hollywood Burbank Airport in Los Angeles at the very same time. The sea ice at the North Pole is typically around 2 to 3 meters 6 feet 7 into 9 feet 10 in thick, although ice thickness, its spatial extent, and the fraction of open water within the ice pack can vary rapidly and profoundly in response to weather and climate. Studies have shown that the average ice thickness has decreased in recent years. It is likely that global warming has contributed to this, but it is not possible to attribute the recent abrupt decrease in thickness entirely to the observed warming in the Arctic. Reports have also predicted that within a few decades the Arctic Ocean will be entirely free of ice in the summer. This may have significant commercial implications, see Territorial Claims, below. The retreat of the Arctic sea ice will accelerate global warming, as less ice cover reflects less solar radiation, and may have serious climate implications by contributing to Arctic cyclone generation. Flora and fauna Polar bears are believed to travel rarely beyond about 82 degrees north owing to the scarcity of food, though tracks have been seen in the vicinity of the North Pole, and a 2006 expedition reported sighting a polar bear just 1 mile 1 kilometers from the pole. The ringed seal has also been seen at the pole, and Arctic foxes have been observed less than 60 kilometers 37 miles away at 89 degrees 40 n. Birds seen at or very near the pole include the snow bunting, northern fulmar and black-legged kittiwake, though some bird sightings may be distorted by the tendency of birds to follow ships and expeditions. Fish have been seen in the waters at the North Pole, but these are probably few in number. A member of the Russian team that descended to the North Pole seabed in August 2007 reported seeing no sea creatures living there. However, it was later reported that a sea anemone had been scooped up from the seabed mud by the Russian team and that video footage from the dive showed unidentified shrimps and amphipods. Territorial claims to the North Pole and Arctic regions Currently, under international law, no country owns the North Pole or the region of the Arctic Ocean surrounding it. The five surrounding Arctic countries, Russian Federation, Canada, Norway, Denmark via Greenland, and the United States, are limited to a 200 nautical mile 370 kilometers, 230 miles exclusive economic zone off their coasts, and the area beyond that is administered by the International Seabed Authority. Upon ratification of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, a country has 10 years to make claims to an extended continental shelf beyond its 200-mile exclusive economic zone. If validated, such a claim gives the claimant state rights to what may be on or beneath the sea bottom within the claimed zone. Norway ratified the convention in 1996, Russia ratified in 1997, Canada ratified in 2003, and Denmark ratified in 2004, have all launched projects to base claims that certain areas of Arctic continental shelves should be subject to their sole sovereign exploitation. In 1907 Canada invoked a sector principle to claim sovereignty over a sector stretching from its coasts to the North Pole. This claim has not been relinquished, but was not consistently pressed until 2013. Cultural associations In some children
S. Western cultures, the geographic North Pole is described as the location of Santa Claus's workshop and residence, although the depictions have been inconsistent between the geographic and magnetic North Pole. Canada Post has assigned postal code HOHOHO to the North Pole, referring to Santa. S. Traditional exclamation of Ho Ho Ho, this association reflects an age old esoteric mythology of Hyperborea that posits the North Pole, the otherworldly world axis, as the abode of God and superhuman beings. The popular figure of the pole dwelling Santa Claus thus functions as an archetype of spiritual purity and transcendence. As Henry Corbin has documented, the North Pole plays a key part in the cultural worldview of Sufism and Iranian mysticism. The Orient sought by the mystic, the Orient that cannot be located on our maps, is in the direction of the North, beyond the North, owing to its remoteness. The Pole is sometimes identified with a mysterious mountain of ancient Iranian tradition called Mount Qaf, Jabal Qaf, the farthest point of the Earth. According to certain authors, the Jabal Qaf of Muslim cosmology is a version of Rups Nigra, a mountain whose ascent, like Dante, S. Climbing of the Mountain of Purgatory, represents the pilgrim's progress through spiritual states. In Iranian theosophy, the heavenly pole, the focal point of the spiritual ascent, acts as a magnet to draw beings to its palaces ablaze with immaterial matter. See also Notes a. Carat data is from a Greenlandic weather station at 83 degrees 38 and 033 degree 22 W located 709 kilometers 441 miles from the North Pole. References Further reading External links Arctic Council the Northern Forum North Pole Web Cam FAQ on the Arctic and the North Pole Daylight, Darkness and Changing of the Seasons at the North Pole Video of the nuclear icebreaker Yamal visiting the North Pole in 2001 Polar Discovery, North Pole Observatory Expedition